Glass Hillbilly is probably my biggest vice. It's a vintage store in Nashville. Um, when I moved here from New York City, that was my previous job, managing vintage, and it seemed like the easiest way for me to juggle a new music career and a way to sustain living here. It started out really small at first, just a few jeans and a few boots, and now we've expanded and we travel kind of around the country buying and selling things in tandem with performing music. I always joke that I started music out of spite. I was dating a guy that um, was a musician and we had a breakup and he told me to mind my own business so that he could go um, make a record. And I did mind my own business. I came to Nashville and I made my own record. Um, I wasn't currently a performing artist of any kind. I just was kind of living on a little bit of a challenge to kind of show him that I thought I could do what he did. And it was kind of like, you know, a project for me in the same way that High Class Hillbilly became a project for me. I was challenging myself to do something. So I got the record deal, which was like not enough to live in New York City. And we came here to Nashville to try to juggle, you know, a new endeavor and kind of reaching into a new career. And that's when I feel like I really fast-tracked and like learned how to be a musician. You know, now I tour 180 dates a year, which is why I like to vintage shop in tandem. And, um, you know, it's all about spreading the song and finding fans and like getting out there, but it's also about just being able to sustain being out there, which is why I think that the picking goes hand in hand and helps me feel creative and continue to do my job. Any endeavor that you're thinking about pursuing, young or old, you know what I mean? It's a career change. It's just all about persistence. I tattooed on the back of my arm recently, try harder, because it was something that I feel like my track coach said early on in my life that like shouldn't have resonated so hard, but did. It's not easy, like, you know what I mean? I heard in early days of like my friends being models, like you have to be comfortable with 99 out of 100 questions being a no. And that's a tough pill to swallow, but then when you start to feel the no's, you know what I mean? When you start to feel the resistance and you know that like your yes is like coming, I feel like you can keep pushing. And sure enough, every single thing, I met a girl the other day that wanted to close her vintage store. She had hit in this spot where she's thinking about getting rid of all the clothes. And I just reminded her something I was joking about. I had a horse trailer that carried around high class hillbilly when I moved here and a tree in my front yard broke, hit the house and crushed the trailer. And I was convinced that the universe was telling me that I needed to close my store. And what ended up happening was this place opened because I was looking for somewhere to get rid of my stuff and ended up finding a new store. So I think sometimes getting those no's and getting those like rejections in the field you want are just kind of pushing you to be more creative and a better version of the, of the type of project you're trying to do. And so just try a little harder.